Hello and welcome to the Wall Bunker painting tutorial on uh, Imperial Japanese Army uh, soldiers for the Second Sino-Japanese War 1937 to 1945. So the first color we're going to use is Vallejo uh, Japan Uniform 923 uh, and this is for the uniforms and caps for figures. Uh, so we're just going to pretty much do this all over the model uh, with a large to medium brush as you can see just slapping it on just trying to get everything painted <clears throat> covered in it pretty much because this uh, this color goes on the shirts trousers and putties uh, this is, painting guide uh, is pretty much for from the beginning of the Japanese Empire to the full of it so there's hardly any uh, differences between late and war uh, color schemes except they had uh, some more green jackets in the early phase and the materials they were used from were generally better uh, because they had better capability of getting material so yep we're just adding it on here all over the model where it needs to be and here's uh, just a demonstration of uh, the caps uh, which are the same color again not worrying about uh, getting it on the face or uh, any other parts because this is just a light coat uh, I underprimed with a grade primer, so yep. Uh, now we're going to move on to uh, flat earth nine eight three, and this is going to be used for the uh, the boots, the belt, and the ammo pouches on the figure. You could also use this for the rifle sling, uh, but I don't use that. I use a different color for that. But if you wanted to, you could do that. Uh, I forgot to show you that I did do two coats of the uh, Japan uniform. I just decided just to film doing it once because you didn't really, I would assume you didn't really want to see it twice. So yeah. So again, this is for the uh, the boots, the belt and the ammo pouches. Uh, I just needed to add some more to the palette that I was using and swapping to a more smaller brush so I could just be more precise as to where the paint goes because I didn't want to have to go back and add uh, if I got it onto the uniform and put some more Japan uniform on. At this stage it doesn't really matter if you're that unneat but you want to try and make sure it's as good as possible. That's why you can see I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I get it, get it all correct and not have to redo it. Uh, so yeah, this is our f my first painting guide, so uh, there's going to be times where the figure goes out of uh, shot, so uh, please do not uh, do not go mad. <laughs> uh, mistakes happen. Uh, here's just me showing you exactly the <clears throat> what's painted what. Alright, so we're moving on to the uniform wash. Uh, this is GW, or Games Workshop, Agarath Earthshade. And this is going to be put on uh, the entire uniform. This is just to add some depth and uh, shading. Uh, so we're going to put that all over the model. Uh, shirts, trousers, and putties included. And it's just to really give the model a bit of a pop. So it doesn't. It looks more <clears throat> uh, like war torn, and you know, you like a used uniform uh, because you know uniforms are going to be quite dirty. You know, going around the swamps and jungle terrain of of the Pacific, which is you know 
historically accurate, then your uniform isn't going to be perfect. I mean, <clears throat> there's probably going to be rips in it and, you know, mud and just general grime and dirt in there because of the terrain. <clears throat> so leave this, go, give this a good 10 minutes or so to dry. Luckily, I did this on a hot day, so I only waited about five minutes. So, yeah. Uh, next is Brown Violet 887. Uh, this is going to be used on the helmets, bread bag, and water bottle of the Japanese infantry. Uh, you could do their helmets uh, in in the Japan uniform 923 because historically they they did have um, both dark dark helmets like a greenish helmet, and they did have a uh, a tan kind of helmet. But uh, I'm just doing mine all uh, brown violet because uh, I just wanted them. I was I was thinking, well, these guys are going to be uh, having the darker uh, helmet because <clears throat> I don't know. I just thought that would be cooler than having that. Uh, this also is for the um, the guys who have the helmet covers, as you can see uh, with this guy. They're exactly the same. Uh, <clears throat> So yeah, that's that's basically that. I'm just showing you that you, that is also the helmet cover. Uh, now this step you could skip uh, if you really wanted to, but this is just a Games Workshop no oil wash on the helmet just to add some uh, shading on the helmet itself. Uh, <clears throat> in the end the shading on that particular figure didn't really come up as well and here I'm just using a dry brush to soak up some of the uh, the the wash and here's a side-by-side -side comparison uh, that's with the wash uh, uh, the guy on the right is the one with the wash and the guy on the left was the one without a wash uh, <clears throat> so we're going to use khaki 988 for the uniform straps and water bottle straps now you want a small, uh, a detailed brush for this, or a toothpick works quite well. And uh, here you're just literally doing the straps on the model, trying to be as neat as possible. Uh, you could do these uh, in the Flat Earth 983, um, but I did these a slightly different color to add some more variety to the figure and here you'll just see the strap on the water bottle that I was talking about and here's just me showing you the uh, the straps uh, so I forgot to show you the paint for this uh, this is flat brown 984 and this is going to be for the uh, rifle stock and um, sword sheath and sword handle for officers um, this is a nice a dark color which uh, which is good because they're the type 99 Arasaka which is what the Japanese uh, infantry used uh, which is the what that guy has is uh, like a darkish kind of one so this is beige brown uh, 875 and I just wanted to use a lighter color for the uh, for the strap but you could also use um, uh, flat earth if you uh, wanted to uh, but I wanted a kind of lighter color for that uh, so we're going to use Games Workshop lead belcher for all the metal parts on the figures uh, this includes the bayonet uh, and rifle um, parts uh, you could add a bit of black to this to make it more historically uh, a black blackish silver but uh, I didn't really want to do that because I just wanted to this was a speed painting so I just this is basically just trying to get it as fast as possibly done because you know you want to get your figures onto the table and uh, fighting for your beloved empire of uh, Japan so it's just about for me it was just about getting them onto the table as fast as possible with a with a good scheme uh, so yep uh, just adjusting the camera so you can see um, I did accidentally uh, 
put too much on that and it spilled over to the wooden part. So I think I just left that because I wasn't really that bothered. But you could if you wanted to touch that up. Uh, so this is the skin tone for the Japanese that I used. It's a 50-50 mix of Japan Uniform 923 and Beige Brown 875. Uh, it's just to give a slightly darkish kind of Asian color um, because you don't want to use a like a flat um, flat flesh or a you know a European kind of color because. Um, because they're Japanese and they're from Asia, they have a slightly uh, darker skin tone because of their the climate that they live in. So I did um, uh, a mix of both. Uh, I don't think it really made that much of a difference adding the Japan uniform, uh, but it did make it a tad lighter, which is which is why I put it in there. Uh, so that's why I did that. Uh, going good so far. Uh, try not to get it onto the uh, the helmet on the ins uh, on the underside of the on on the underside of the helmet, which is what I did on my last lot of guys, because uh, it's a pain because you've got to then redo the uh, the the helmet color. Uh, so here we're going to use uh, Games Workshop uh, Anvila Anver Anvila Sunset. Uh, for the um, the imperial star on the on the caps, uh, I use the toothpick for that. Uh, you could also do the uh, use that on the helmets as well because they did actually have, although they're not represented on the models, they did have a imperial star on the helmet of Japan's um, helmets. Uh, so here's just a close up of uh, the three figures that I've used throughout the thing. Uh, I haven't based any of them because uh, it was just trying to get the paint scheme done for you guys and getting this video up quick. And as you can see, it, it's pretty good for a for a speed paint. Uh, as you can see, I've left the bread bag and the uh, entrenching tool the same color. Uh, so thanks for watching and keep checking out this channel. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.